Math 31, let's get going with this word problem. So we have the volume of a cylinder varies directly as the height and the square of the radius. A cylinder with radius 5 centimeters and height 10 centimeters has a volume of 785 centimeters cubed. Find the volume of a cylinder with radius 10 and height 15. All right, so as I read through that, I hear three variables. I hear volume, I hear height, and I hear radius. All right, and I also saw this word, varies directly. All right, and then I would also pick up on the square of the radius. I hear a complete ordered triple, right? Radius five, height 10, volume 785. And then I hear an incomplete ordered triple. I have a radius and height, but I'm missing a volume. So those are all just things to keep in mind as we're about to go through our four steps. So the first step of any variation problem is to write your general relationship and it's gonna involve all of these variables. I'm gonna use V, H, and R, all right? And I'm gonna write an equation. So it says volume varies directly. So when I hear varies directly, I'm gonna have a constant of proportionality and a multiplication symbol. And it says it varies directly as the height and the square of the radius. So there it is. Volume is going to be equal to KHR squared. Fantastic. All right, so with that, Step two, right, says substitute given values of a variable into your equation. Well, here's my complete order triple. When the radius is five, the height is 10, the volume is 785. So let me plug that in. I'm gonna have 785. That's gonna be equal to K times, well, the height was 10, and the radius was five. And again, I'm gonna be really mindful and remember that I need to square the radius because it says right here a square of the radius. All right, so with this, we can solve for k. So let's see what we have here. Um, five squared is 25, 25 times 10 is 250. So I will have 250k being equal to 785. I do not know what that number is. Let me get my calculator out and we will do 785 divided by 250. All right, I'm gonna turn that into a fraction. It looks like it was 157 over 50. I'm gonna stay with fractions. If you wanna use the decimal, 3.14, and maybe that number's a little bit familiar to you, then go for it. But I'm gonna use 157 oops, over 50. Actually, I'll put both just so you have it for reference. So K, you could either write 157 over 50 or 3.14, all right? And actually, either one is fine. I usually go with fractions, especially when decimals are non-repeating and just keep on going. This decimal actually ends, it's just 3.14. So really either answer is, is, is gonna give you the exact same result. All right, so let's see step three, which say take your value of K that you found in step two and plug it in to your original formula. So let me do this both ways. If you're really into using decimals, you could say V was 3.14, oops, excuse me, HR squared, right? Or if you wanted to, all right, I, I would say K was 157 over 50, HR squared. Either of those are completely acceptable answers, okay? And then so always our last step is to substitute the remaining values of my variables and solve for the required uh, unknown. And it says it right here. I know the radius is 10, the height is 15, but what on earth is the volume? So let's do this both ways. Here I would say volume was 3.14. All right, we knew the height was 15 and the radius was 10. Here I would do the same thing, but I would have my fraction. All right, the height was 15, the volume, nope, nope, nope. The radius was 10, I'm not gonna forget to square it. So when we crunch these, so let's do 3.14, and then I will do times 15 times 10 squared. It looks like we're getting 47.10. And if I do it this way, if we do 157 divided by 50 times 15 times 10 squared, we are getting 47.10. Now this is all fine and good, but again, if you give me this answer as is, if you just write 4710, I'm gonna dock you a bit. You haven't given me units. So when we think about this, we're, act, we're looking for a volume. Now volume is always cubic units. Distance is one dimensional units. 
area is two dimensional units and then volume is three dimensional units. And you can actually see the units here in this volume, right? Back when we were using 785 in step two, there are the volume units. So your answer to me should be 4,710 cubic centimeters. All right, so with that, we're gonna try one more. It's gonna be our most convoluted example in example six, and we will get it all worked out. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.